Hey guys, this is Kyle with Loop Community, and today I want to show you a workflow that I'm using in Ableton Live to automate my song flow and also my song transitions. And for this workflow, I'm using a Max for Live device called Follow. If you're not familiar with Max for Live, it's basically a third party software that allows developers to create kind of custom devices, custom plugins for Ableton Live. Um, so this is one of those Max for Live custom devices. Uh, it's called Follow, and it's by the company Isotonic Studios. And what it allows for is to set um, a specific clip to be basically your, um, your marker for when you want the song to progress. So basically, uh, this is my click MIDI track here, and I've placed this Follow device on the click track, and I'm telling the device now, at the end of this clip, which is basically the same thing as at the end of the intro, I want it to follow and basically go to the next scene. Uh, I could also say go to the, uh, the previous scene. I could say play the same scene again, go to any scene. Um, I could even say play the next clip again. Um, and what's more, I've MIDI mapped two of them, the again and the next options so that during live performance I can easily um, you know, play the same part of a song again or I can repeat things like that. So a little background, I just have uh, one dummy track for my song title, I've got my click MIDI track, uh, my cues MIDI track, a stereo loop track, um, a one-shot cues track I just call my director, and then I've got this commands track I'll explain in just a moment. And so I'll show you here as I begin the song, I'm just going to press play, and then this follow device is going to uh, progress down the song and I really don't have to do anything while we play. If I want to repeat a section of a song, I can just put it to the again follow. It'll repeat it. When I'm ready to go on, I can put it back to the next. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Intro. Two, three, four. We'll jump ahead here. So let's suppose, you know, at the end of the verse here, I kind of decide on the fly I want to repeat it. I'll open this up so you can see. Basically gonna hit the MIDI note corresponding to again. Two, three, four. Also really helpful for practices if you have to vamp a certain part of the song for a while to get it down with the band. Um, so that's how I'm using it there. And I'm also using it for song transitions. So for instance, this song right here, um, after I play the last end of uh, Sing Sing Sing, I kind of want it to stop and I want it to automatically queue up for Light Shine In so that when it's time to play that one I can just press play. Um, I can speak a little before and press play and not really have to do anything else. So I've put that follow device to tell it at the end of the song, go to the next scene. And then on this scene, I've told it um, basically through the IAC driver, when this note is played, go to the next scene. And I'm doing that so I can create a hard stop. I want to say a little something there so that it'll, it'll give me an opportunity to do that. And it'll be like this. And two, three, four. Cool, so you can see that it's highlighted the next song. I can say something and whenever it's time to go. Worship leader, three, four. And then finally, if you have a song, uh, we'll just jump to this one here. Intro, two, where you kind three, of want to combine two songs together, um, it makes it really easy using this device to do that. So we'll go in here, jump to the end. Uh, so this is, uh, there is none like you. And then at the end, I, I want to go right into the instrumental of Cornerstone. So uh, I've put the cues in and timed it out. So it'll take us right into the next song for a smooth transition. Instrumental. Three. Four. And the, some people who are already familiar with uh, functionality in live may be asking what the difference is between this and uh, follow actions. 
and follow actions are lives built in way of going basically from one clip to the next. Um, so if I wanted, by default, I could just say after this many measures, either go to the next clip, play this clip again, stop. Um, for me, the downsides of that are having to specify a measure number. So you basically have to go through and for every one, tell it after 53 measures, 53 measures, 53 measures, go to the next one. Okay, the verse, and calculate that out. After 20 measures, go to the next one. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, and what's more, it only will launch the next clip. So this will launch this clip when it's done, this will launch this clip. Um, I kind of wanted to launch the whole scene since everything is going to be playing in time. So that's where the device makes it really easy. Um, and finally, the way that it's MIDI mappable and I can turn things on and off um, makes it simple to use a foot switch MIDI a foot controller live to get what I need.